Gravel bikes are a scam. Or are they? Often compared to hardtail mountain bikes and cyclocross bikes, gravel bikes have become quite a popular thing. In today's episode, we're comparing a top-end hardtail mountain bike with a top-end racing gravel bike. But what is gravel? I don't know the answer. Well, <laughs> this is the problem, isn't it? What, what is gravel in this day and age? Originally, it was like the, the little gravelly paths that were always dusty in nice warm countries. But really what it means is riding your bike off-road. Sometimes it's paths, sometimes it's trails, sometimes it's muddy, sometimes it's not. It's a bike that's versatile that can do lots of stuff. Most of the time it's muddy here. It's always muddy here. <laughs> Contrary to the name, mountain bikes aren't specifically for riding mountains. They're for riding a variety of terrain. Anything off-road is what they excel in. So you've got rock gardens, you have small bits of gravel, you have big bits of gravel, you have mud, single track, jumps, pretty much anything that's off-road, this bike is gonna be fantastic for. Generally, like this bike, they will have flat handlebars, massive knobbly tires so you get extra grip when you have loose surfaces and a slack geometry so you're sat a little bit more upright than you would be on a road bike or a gravel bike. This one we have here is a hardtail so it only has suspension on the front. It's got a front fork with 100 millimeters of travel. When I say travel, I mean the distance in between here and here. That squashes down and creates comfort. This example here is a cross-country bike which is the shorter travel version of a mountain bike used for racing and riding fast still. So it's pretty close to a gravel bike. It's almost the next logical step if you want to ride more aggressive terrain. A gravel bike is a little bit different. It looks much more like a road bike. It's essentially a road bike with bigger tire clearance, nice long wheelbase, bottom bracket's gonna be slightly higher than the hardtail mountain bike. A lot of gravel bikes still use road components, but generally bigger tire clearance than a road bike, up to 50 millimeters on your standard gravel bike. Are these both top end bikes? They are, aren't they? They're basically as light as they get for the type of bike that they are. Let's find out. One gravel bike weighs 7.86 kilos. That is very light for a gravel bike. The hardtail weighs 9.95 kilos. I think it's about time we went for a ride, Francis. Here we go, Hamsterley Forest. Massive network of trails and gravel tracks. We've got a mountain bike, we've got a gravel bike. We're gonna switch around and see what happens. I'm already out of breath. This is different. Yes, why is this such a, such a hard start at Hamsterley? I've oh. never been here and be like, Oh, that was a lovely leisurely ride. I feel like you're fine, I'm busting along. First up, climbing test. So one of the big, big differences between these two bikes when the gears are concerned is that this one, the mountain bike, has a way smaller chainring. Cassette sizes are actually identical. 34-2 chainring on here and a 52-10 cassette, which is perfect for when you're riding very, very steep hills, which you would be in a marathon mountain bike race. Kind of what this bike is made for. So why are you complaining about this little climb? Because it's slow, because the tires are massive. Oh, so it's the tires you're blaming? Yeah. Maybe it's just you, Francis? Well, we've got a bit of a headwind as well. Maybe you need to like do a bit more training so you can ride at my standard. Tires come into play here massively. These are 2.3 inch tires. The bike allows for this clearance, unlike the gravel bike that Jimmy's riding at the moment, which uh, I think has a maximum of 44 mil tires. You get way fatter ones on here and they're much more knobbly, which makes them a lot slower. Where this will be beneficial is when we hit the trails in a bit. I'm gonna be having fun, hopefully. Bike swap. Oh, this is easier. What, you just spin around? It's like little dancing feet. I retract that statement. When it's actually not going uphill, so you, so you just like, you know, when you're going uphill, you assume that it always hurts. When you're on the flat, which this basically is, you then notice that it's like riding in sand. It's like having bags of potatoes strapped to the wheels. Aside from the position on this bike, it's the tires that are gonna make the big difference. You can transform how this bike rides by putting much smaller gravel tires on here. Equally, you can transform how this bike rides by going from road bike tires to gravel tires. The limiter, however, is frame clearance. So here you've got a massive suspension fork with loads of space in it. And on the rear of this bike, you've got enough space to fit in like a 2.3 inch, maybe more 
and that makes a big, big difference to the kind of terrain that you can ride over. Equally, you start putting big nobbles on the tires as well. They take up even more space. There is no way you can fit a tire this size on a gravel bike like this. Gravel bike, way less space for tires. This is pretty much as big as you can fit in, 45 millimeters with some nobbles on. It's gonna be a lot faster, but you won't be able to ride the same terrain as on that bike. So that really is the limiting factor. Of course, you can go the other way and put a skinnier tire on or a slicker tire if you want this to be faster on the road or on like really, really small, tightly packed gravel. Really big difference with tire choice. Find what works for you and base it on the terrain that you're gonna be riding. Do you think it's a good idea me riding this mountain bike, bearing in mind I've ridden mountain bikes once with you on one that is red. Doesn't red red means a danger. No, red's like the middle. Also, you're better off riding that than you are the gravel bike, so you might as well just go. I'm gonna assume that you're gonna die. Oh, so much harder. Off the jump. Oh. <laughs> no jump to that. Well you're way faster this time. Did you get all of that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go much faster than that on what? this bike. Like, it, it, but it felt, it was way slower than I usually would, but it didn't feel slower. It was just <laughs> like fun. It was really good fun. But based on it, what I, this is under biking. Based on what I experienced on this bike, I can't imagine how horrible it must have been on that. <laughs> it felt like I was going to go over the handlebars a few times <laughs> on, the, on the very small drop-offs, which I've never even noticed before. Because <laughs> yeah. the bike just does it all, doesn't it? It does so much for you when you're on a, a bike with suspension and that slack geometry, so you're leaning back much more. Whereas this wants to whoop, send you over. You definitely do feel it in the back wheel though. It does like, because it hasn't got full suspension. I like the idea of having a go on it on the gravel bike, but it'd just be too dangerous. I'm yeah. not gonna do it. The biggest, the biggest difference, I think, is the hand position. That is a much more stable position for your hands to be in. You're stronger, like your grip is strong on the bars. Yeah. You feel secure. This you don't, because they're basically, well, they are road levers. Riding this bike on these trails for the first time, you're f you find huge bumps and huge little dips in the trail, which you've never even noticed before. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's fun, but it is a very big difference. I mean, thank goodness I've got 45 mil tires on, otherwise this would be savage. Time for me to ride the hardtail. Coming straight off the gravel bike onto this. It's such a treat. It rides so well. The difference is night and day when you're on a trail like that. And this isn't in, it's not a very technical trail. It's pretty smooth and flowy. One very similar thing I would mention though is braking performance. They've both got 160 rotors on because this is a uh, XC bike, hardtail XC bike. Whereas the full sus I have, 180. The difference is very marginal between the gravel bike and this in terms of braking power. Last little bit of trail now. I'll see if I can find Jimmy, wherever he's gone. <laughs> Catherine, what is better? A hardtail mountain bike or a gravel bike? Definitely a gravel bike. I hate mountain bikes, but I also love mountain bikes. There's a gravel bike, there's a mountain bike, I'm gonna pick the gravel bike. I think what I wasn't expecting with mountain bikes, you can just ride through stuff and it just goes. Whereas like on a gravel bike or a bike that doesn't have suspension and that big wide upright positioning, you know, you notice it. I think perhaps the key is something in between both. For the record, we don't actually know why Nick is here. <laughs> just babysitting. It's your baby. I wanted to talk about compatibility with your existing stuff. So I think the reason why gravel bikes are popular is because what, they look like road bikes. So people who have been into road cycling a long time look at that and they go, oh, well, my cassette's going to fit. My current road wheels are going to fit so I can put those on and use it on the road. My handlebars and stems are all going to fit. It's all the same size. My rotors are going to match if you've got disc brakes on there. There's loads of compatibility with all of your parts and all of your spares and all of your tools. Whereas that, the reason our friend Nick, who runs a bike shop, 
doesn't like working on mountain bikes is because it's a whole different set of tools. You know, you, you've got to have different stuff there to be able to service different things. How the hell do you even service a, a, a fork thingy? What you, are they called? You suspension? take it, you undo it suspension. with normal Allen keys and then you take it off and you send it back. So with suspension, generally a bike shop would send that stuff back anyway. But it's all, it's all the other stuff, the different standards, like if a bottom bracket on one of my bikes breaks, I know I can steal one from another bike. It's just convenient and I think that's a valid reason to choose a gravel bike over a hardtail if you're just gonna be riding some light off-road stuff, but you already have loads of road bikes, consider that it's loads of the same tools and loads of the same spares. This is Tony Fawcett, 19-time Northeast Cyclocross champion and came third in the world. Third in the world. What's the difference between a gravel bike and a cross bike? Basically, the modern gravel bike is longer and lower. I think it's about 15 mil lower in the bottom bracket area and it's a lot longer in wheelbase so it's not as nimble in the corners. Would you race a gravel bike at a cyclocross race? I wouldn't, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would choose to race a cyclocross bike at a cyclocross event. However, I do think you can race a cyclocross on a gravel bike. Told you, there is a difference. I think if I had to choose one, gravel bike would be it. It just is more versatile. You can do, if you have the skills to do it, anything you could do on a cross country bike using a gravel bike. I think the type of riding that I do, the mountain bike would just not be appropriate. You're always gonna be in a, a very upright position, which although it's stable, it's just overkill and then it's gonna slow you down. The tires are gonna be sluggish. Even if you put gravel tires on, on the flat bar mountain bike, I just don't need to be in that position for the riding that I do. One gravel bike with a wheel set that also has road tires on it pretty much would do everything that I ride. Thank you for watching. Please let us know in the comment section if you'd like to see us compare something else to something else and what those two things would be. Preferably bikes. Preferably bikes. <laughs> You're turning into me. <laughs> Appreciate it. See you soon.